All right, guys, I thought I would go over a super in-depth Heisman big board, some dark horses that I like based off of all of the odds. We're going to look at like 40 players uh, overall here for 2022 and really uh, dissect this list. So let's get into it, starting with the, I believe this is top 10 favorites. And yes, we do have CJ Stroud. The favorite over Bryce Young, pretty clearly, plus 200. Bryce Young is plus 350. There's a few different reasons for this. I'd say the biggest one, you know, we just haven't seen the same player win two Heisman trophies in forever. It's almost like it's not going to happen again. That's something that's going against Bryce Young, as well as Bryce Young having a very inexperienced receiver room, a lot of weapons. Same thing with running backs, although. Alabama got a few good transfer, two few good transfers. Overall, C.J. Stroud with J.S.N., Marvin Harrison Jr., Julian Fleming, Trevion Henderson, Mayan Williams. It, it, it's a lot more of a talented room at this point for Ohio State. So, not surprising to me. I mean, that's a crazy number though for C.J. right now, plus two hundred. But I do agree, C.J. should be the favorite over Bryce Young. And then the only other guy. That is less than plus 2,000 is Caleb Williams. This is really right now a three-horse race according to these odds. Caleb Williams is plus 700. Uh, Personally, I don't see it this year for Caleb Williams and the Heisman. Uh, I mean, I guess that's not that bold considering he's plus 700. But just this year, first year in a new team, it is the same system with Lincoln Riley and you do have Jordan Addison. But I think Caleb Williams' Heisman year could be next year. When he's a junior, he'll be a three-year starter at that point. Uh, I, you know, I would say if you if you forced me to pick a QB to win the award, I would have to go with C.J. Stroud at this point. Caleb Williams is plus 700. And then my previous dark horse, who is now shot up to number four on the list, is Will Anderson. Guys, I don't know what happened with Will Anderson. He was plus 4,000 a month ago. At least I think he was. I don't know how his odds improved that much. I don't think that many people are betting on him. But apparently his odds moved up to plus 2,000 for a defensive player that is basically unheard of. I think Will Anderson is the dark horse to win the Heisman. When you look at the way the narrative is setting up, You know, Heisman voters have gotten, people have criticized Heisman voters saying you haven't voted a defensive player, it's a QB award. If Will Anderson puts up another crazy season, last year he had 34 tackles for a loss and 17 sacks. If he gets 20 sacks and like 40 tackles for loss and he's got the narrative and Alabama is undefeated and maybe Bryce Young isn't as good this year because he doesn't have Jamison Williams, he doesn't have John Mechie, uh, and Will Anderson is really carrying the defense and Alabama has the number one defense in football, there is going to be a legitimate narrative. Again, he had 34 tackles for loss last year as a sophomore. It's unheard of. And now he's got Dallas Turner on the other side. It's not like they can just double team him. So, I mean, I don't know what happens. It's sad his odds have moved up so much because I thought he was great value at plus 4,000. Now that he's plus 2,000, it's a crazy jump. It is, but I still like Will Anderson possibly to win this award. He would probably be my favorite right now. I just think the way it's setting up with the narrative, how no defensive players have won it, we almost saw the same thing with Chase Young. Until Maryland came out with the bogus, uh, you know, thing with his girlfriend, and he got suspended for two games. Uh, but he, Chase Young, was not going to win the Heisman even if he played those two games because um, Joe Burrow was just so ridiculous that year. But Chase Young was on track possibly to win the Heisman until the two game suspension. Uh, after that, Bijan Robinson. I think Texas loses too many games. I also think they're down. They throw a little bit more. Bijan isn't going to have 2,000 rushing yards, and at this point, that you basically need that to win the Heisman. DJ Uilangile. You're just projecting. I mean, this was a former top 10 overall recruit in the nation who struggled mightily last year. He had 10 touchdowns and 9 interceptions. The reason he's this high is just because he's Clemson's quarterback. Maybe he could turn it around, but even if he turns it around, I don't see him winning the Heisman. 
Quinn Ewers, not this year. Next year, I think it's going to be Caleb Williams versus Quinn Ewers for the Heisman. But this year, it's too early. If you're Texas, your goal should be get to a New Year's Six Bowl and beat Oklahoma. And Quinn Ewers could have a really nice year. But comparing him to Bryce Young and C.J. Stroud at this point, it's not going to happen. Dylan Gabriel intrigues me. He does. They have Marvin Mims. They have Eric Gray. They have a good offense. Brett Venables is more of a defensive coach. But Dylan Gabriel is a really, really, really good quarterback. I don't think he can win the Heisman, but I think he can make it to New York, if that makes sense. It'd be like a finalist. Uh, you know, Oklahoma still is talented. Jackson Smith and Jigba. The only thing I worry about with JS, and actually there's two things. Number one, we just had a receiver win the Heisman. So it's like they're probably not going to give it to another receiver right after we saw Devontae Smith win it. Number two, Ohio State is going to be in a position in about five or six games this year where JSN might not even receive a target in the second half. Okay, guys, I'm just like the week two game against Arkansas State, the Toledo game, the Rutgers game, the Indiana game, the Northwestern game. That's five off the top of my head. Will he even play in the second half of any of those games? Maybe into the third quarter. But it's tough for a receiver if he's not playing the second half. He needs, if you want to be a receiver, you want you want to win the Heisman, he needs touchdowns, which I mean he can get, but it's not like he's a tall receiver red zone threat. And you need a ton of yards, which he's going to get probably 17 or 1,800 yards, but he's just not going to be able to get the the massive 2,200-yard type season because he's going to be resting in the second half of many of these games. And then uh, Jamar Gibbs, the transfer, you know, I, no way. That's a lot of speculation. He's on Alabama now. He was a really good recruit on Georgia Tech. He was like a top 50 player. Was Georgia Tech's one of their greatest recruits all time? And then he hits the transfer portal. They also have Trey Sanders at Alabama that I think is going to cut into his carries. I'm shocked Gibbs has a higher Heisman odds than Trevion Henderson. That's shocking to me. Uh, moving on, we've got Tyler Van Dyke. That's another dark horse I like. The narrative is there for Tyler Van Dyke. There's one issue. Skill position players. I thought Miami would for sure break out the NIL budget and spend money and get Jordan Addison, but they didn't do it. They need receiver weapons. They need to help Tyler Van Dyke. They do have a really good tight end. Good young tight end, but guys, Tyler Van Dyke, it's there. The narrative is there. When is the last time Miami has had this elite of a quarterback? It's been forever. People like something new. Elite quarterbacks at Miami, it hasn't happened in a while. Tyler Van Dyke, he's a dark horse there. Trevion Henderson, no chance. So Trevion, I think, is the best running back in college football. The concern with Trevion is the overall lack of touches. I could see a few games where he only gets eight carries. We've got, you know, Ohio State has Mayan Williams. They've got Evan Pryor, who's bulked up. He's gotten bigger. He's a former top 100 recruit as well. So uh, Evan Pryor, I would say, or excuse me, Trevion, I would say 1,700 rushing yards maybe, somewhere around there. Regular season, probably only 1,400. They're going to want to keep him fresh for the playoffs. And again, when you face Rutgers, when you face Arkansas, I mean, Arkansas State, Trevion may only get like seven carries against Arkansas State, like literally. Rutgers, he may get like 10 carries. So he's just not going to get the amount of carries, the overall volume. The offense is everyone's going to eat with Ohio State. They're going to spread it around. No one player is going to put up ridiculous numbers, of course, except C.J. Stroud, who will probably throw for 55 touchdowns. But um, So him, next, Anthony Richardson, plus 5,000. It's just way too much, much speculation. I'll be honest, it is interesting. Anthony Richardson has a chance to make a Heisman statement week one versus Utah. Primetime 7 o'clock game, ESPN. Wow, what a major opportunity that is to burst onto the college football scene. Utah is going to be a top 10 team. That could be crazy for Anthony Richardson. But winning the Heisman, I'm concerned about his passing ability overall. And then you've got Sam Hartman, who his odds are probably taken off the board. He's got a medical issue, unfortunately. And and we hope that he's okay, um, but his odds are off the board there for Wake Forest, and they've got a great receiver too, A.T. Perry. Uh, next, Slovis, who's the transfer at Pitt now. 
I see no chance without Jordan Addison. JT Daniels, who now is at West Virginia. How about JT Daniels' college career? He reclassifies, so he reclassifies a class early. Then he goes to USC, enrolls there. Then he goes to Georgia, and now he's at West Virginia. Very interesting. But um, he'll be fun to watch, but he's not going to win the Heisman. Jackson Dart at Ole Miss with that Lane Kiffin off offense. You know, Jackson was actually a transfer portal five-star. Fun fact on him. Because now they're ranking transfer portal players, and 247 Sports rated him as a five-star. So he's very talented. They've got Zach Evans now. It'll be an interesting offense, but he's not winning the Heisman. Hayden Hooker, uh, he could put up really good numbers. He's not winning the Heisman, though. Malik Cunningham is a really fun quarterback. Um, and then I'm just going to kind of go through these really quickly. Someone that I like is Bo Nix. Uh, winning the Heisman, doubtful because he's not going to put up the counting stats. But the way Oregon's schedule is set up with a home game versus Utah, you're not even facing USC in the regular season. You've also got a home game versus UCLA. Bo Nix might have a really good year. He's not going to get the counting stats. They don't have the receivers but Bo Nix is going to have a really good year. K.J. Jefferson, very similar quarterback to Malik Cunningham. Very similar. And then looking at more of the long shots. So I'm just going to go one player I think has maybe a chance to win the Heisman on this board right now. I will say Braylon Allen. And it is a long shot. But the reason I say that, I can see a scenario... Maybe Wisconsin comes into Columbus. Braylon Allen has 300 rushing yards. They beat Ohio State week four. We know Wisconsin's obsessed with running the ball. He's going to get a lot of carries. He could, if he breaks out really as a true sophomore, maybe have like 2,000 rushing yards. I can see a scenario. All these other players, I mean, Spencer Rattler in that offense against those SEC defenses, there's no way. Um, Jordan Addison as a receiver, I just don't see it. Um, so really, no other players on this list. Actually, Jordan Addison is listed twice. So that may be the, his brother. He's got a twin. Yeah, he's got a little twin there. So I also love Brendan Armstrong. I think Brendan Armstrong has a has an outside chance at 50 pa passing touchdowns for Virginia. But in terms of the Heisman... There's no way. Not with Virginia. They're going to lose too many games. And then these are the long, long shots... And on this list, if you made me pick someone, guys, I just don't see anyone on. Maybe Sean Clifford, if he goes crazy as a super senior, he's got the experience. Stenson Bennett is on there. Uh, yeah, I just don't see anyone. You know, I would not bet on anyone here right now. I would say my overall prediction right now, if I had to pick three finalists, I would say C.J. Strout. I would say Will Anderson. And I would also go with... For my third one, maybe a wild card, maybe Tyler Van Dyke as my three finalists right now, and then I will have Will Anderson winning the award, although that's not that bold anymore. I can't believe Will Anderson has the fourth overall odds. It's pretty crazy, guys, but um, that's just kind of a Heisman early season thing. You know, everyone's entitled to their own opinion. I'm sure a lot of people will be picking C.J. Stroud. It is important to note, Normally, at least this is how it's worked in the past, the Heisman preseason favorite never actually wins the award. Now, maybe CJ can change that narrative, and, and you would have to think at some point it's going to happen where the preseason favorite wins the award, but like the last, I don't know, seven or eight years at least, the Heisman preseason favorite has not won. So that is important to note. Again, maybe he can change it. Ohio State has such a great offense, and... Ohio State is certainly due for a Heisman winner. Will it happen? We will see if it does happen. I mean, C.J. Stroud was the odds-on favorite to win the Heisman going into the Michigan game last year. A lot of people forget that. And then it completely changed when Bryce Young erupted versus Georgia. And obviously, you're not blaming the snow, but let's be real, it had a factor into the, the Ohio State performance on offense. Definitely, Ohio State was going to lose that game no matter what. Their defense was terrible. But the offense was affected by the snow. Um, so we will see, guys. Once again, I would say my my three finalists in New York, C.J. Strout, 
Will Anderson, and then Tyler Van Dyke. Also, I'm interested in Dylan Gabriel as well, um, possibly making it. I think he's a really underrated quarterback. Oklahoma's going to love him. If you look at his stats at UCF, they're amazing. And I know it's facing bad competition, but let's be real. Big 12 defenses... Outside of Baylor. Baylor plays good defense. I like Baylor. But outside of Baylor's defense, those defenses in the Big 12, they're not very good. And now Oklahoma State loses Jim Knowles, so it should get easier for Dylan Gabriel. And they've also got Marvin Mims as a receiver. I love Marvin Mims. Uh, so I think he's going to break out this year. We will see. But guys, just going over Heisman, who's the favorites, who are some dark horses. Hopefully I covered enough of it. Um, but guys, that is going to do it for this video. Make sure you follow me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description. I'm, of course, the Depressed Ginger. Thank you for watching.